Hello, I am Bayeru Agabib. As we face the new society driven by data and information, Cyber Africa provides you a trusted platform. Here we understand how telecoms, the internet and the media are redefining our world. Cyber Africa, Connected Africa. Hello and welcome to Cyber Africa on Kakaki, the African Voice. My name is Friday Otuya. I'm standing in for your host, Bayero Agabi. On today's edition of the show, we shall be looking at cyber crime and, of course, cyber security. What are the issues surrounding it and what are the possible ways of solving those issues and those problems? Those are some of the things we shall be beaming our lights to today and you're sure going to enjoy it don't go anywhere stay tuned the increase of information and communications technologies icts and the growing opportunity for real-time borderless exchange of information has brought with it the problem of cyber crime cyber crime refers to criminal activities carried out using computers or the internet the issue has become pervasive all over the world, bringing about the emergence of the term known as cyber security. Cyber security refers to measures taken to protect a computer or computer system from unauthorized access or attack. But cyber security is a complex international issue that requires all stakeholders to come together in ensuring a safer cyberspace. But that unity of purpose has not been forthcoming. Studies have shown that threats to cyberspace have increased dramatically in recent times, afflicting one million cybercrime victims per day. There are multifaceted issues surrounding cybersecurity, ranging from who should take responsibility, the best response against cyber attacks, skilled cybersecurity personnel, prosecution of cyber criminals, extant laws on cybersecurity, etc. The seemingly free and fair U.S. general election of 2016 has since been watered down by allegations of election interference by Russia in favor of one of the candidates. Experts say similar attack techniques will continue to emerge and evolve in 2017, giving cyber activists cause to worry. This is not the first time it has happened. In the past, uh, a, a teenager has once had into the Pentagon, the server in the Pentagon in the, in the past. Uh, for Nigeria, same uh, issues have been raised in the past with the with INET. And what INET actually put in defense that their server is not online. So in the event that you know you do not have such uh, high level software or uh, sophisticated equipment to protect your database, one option is not to allow them to go online. As long as you're not connected to the internet or the World Wide Web, there is no possibility any hacker from anywhere can hack into your system. Importantly, economic disparities between nations and the fact that developing countries do not have sufficient capacity to combat cyber attacks and cyber crime are also factors that must be looked into by all countries of the world so as not to undermine the global fight against cyber crime. This is because the lack of partnership between developed and developing countries could generate safe havens where cyber criminals can use the legal loopholes and the lack of strong security measures present in some countries to perpetrate cyber crimes. 0.08% of our GDP, which is the 127 billion, is lost to cyber crime. What this means is that what the cement sector brings in to our GDP to to, to, uh, to the income of the economy overall is lost to cybercrime, which means that you are almost at zero. So this is a big challenge. I, I think this gives us a very good context for it. Regulatory agencies suggest that between 2004 and 2014, Nigerian banks lost over 165 million naira via electronic fraud and cybercrime. The hacking of the website of the Independent Electoral Commission in 2015 
and many others are still fresh in the minds of Nigerians and are a testimony to the potential of cyber criminals when they strike. Every year, it seems the threats posed by cyber criminals evolve into new and more dangerous forms while security organizations struggle to keep up. The government actually has set up some institutional mechanisms. For example, in the office of the National Security Advisor, okay. you have a computer emergency response team. Uh, at NITSDA, you have a computer emergency readiness and response ecosystem. Also, um, the Cyber Security Advisory Council, again in the presidency, chaired by the NSA, is or has already been inaugurated. These things are being done. Unfortunately, while organizations are developing new security mechanisms, cyber criminals are cultivating new techniques to evade them. Experts have said that with terrorist organizations and other non-state elements creating greater threat profiles, we should expect new cyber threats to emerge over the course of 2017. Threats to financial institutions appear to be higher than others as the recent increase in financial inclusion and cashless banking across the country is generating large amounts of data and placing billions of Naira in financial assets at play. Within the industry, because uh, you find this a lot, and I read some of the reports about cyber security, and uh, that a lot of times the problem is not external, the problem is internal. 70% of the time, the hacking or the exposure to hacking comes from internal uh, breakdown of systems internally, and sometimes you're, you're, you know you fire someone that person has the data, and the person's going. You didn't really look at it. But it's a human angle issue, and we should recognize the the, the, the human angle element and find ways in which we can uh, uh, deal with this. In Nigeria, the signing of the Cyber Crime Bill into law in 2015 was a step in the right direction. But it remains to be seen if the relevant authorities have the skill and expertise to prevent, track down and apprehend online culprits. Nigeria currently loses about $78 billion annually to the activities of cyber criminals. The need for improved security in the country has been voiced on several occasions, with Nigerians calling on policymakers and government agencies to ensure that data is better protected with focus on the institutions in sensitive sectors, including governance, oil and gas, telecommunications and financial services. Uh, I've never been affected but I've gotten messages from all these um, four and nights, that's what I call them, <laughs> sending messages that um, my ATM has expired because of my BBN that if I need to reactivate my ATM, I should send my account details to that number. Before anybody could warn me, as far as um, the internet is concerned, it's going to take it long because I'm, 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 let me just say I'm an internet person. So there's no way you can find, you might say I can send it, I can send that kind of message to anybody. I think I can remember when I was much younger, I got a text on my phone that I won some amount of money and I was so excited and I ran to my elder brother. I was like, oh, look at the text and they looked at me and laughed. I said, oh, this girl, that's still very young. That you forget about the message that uh, they are criminals. Experts have predicted a global worsening of cybercrime in 2017. All data in our world is being transformed into digital information, with many of them hosted online. In this globalized age, the opening of our boundaries digitally has many attendant threats. Our best bet is for the world to come together and mount a firm defense against cybercrime, taking a unified position and backing it up with an enforceable law. It is only when we have an international, comprehensive, and thoroughly developed consensus position that we can address the current threats, which are very grave. But with the present differences among nations of the world in cyber laws, such a task would indeed be difficult. That's it on Cyber Africa for the week. Hope you had a great time watching. On the next week, we'll come your way again. My name is Friday Otuya. Bye for now.
Cyber Africa, connecting Africa.